Good day, comic fam. Comics of the Voice here. Last Monday, I kind of took a little break there, and I didn't do my next batch of Transformers. So, here we are, Monday again, and five more Transformer books. So, let's go look at them. Stay tuned. <laughs> Good day, comic fam. Comics of the Voice here. And we're going to go through the next five. I'm starting to run out of these things, so we're slowing her down a little bit. This will get us up to number 50, and then I'll have, uh, I think it was 55, yeah. And then that'll be the end of it. Well, we've got the movies, Headmasters, uh, and the... Um, it's like the order of battle, but it's the universe, Transformers universe, so it's all the characters and their abilities, so that's pretty cool. So this one's called Cash and Car Nadge, so Carnage. Uh, Bob Badansky and Jose Delbo, he's the artist on this one. So this one's got quite a few first appearances in it too, not on the key collector, but I, they're probably the headmasters are in there, on the uh, in the headmaster books so they might be listed there I have to look but we've got some humans one's called burnout another guy named Randy Roadhog Horton and Felix and skunk and collectively those guys are called the road jammers so they're a bunch of bounty hunters and the Decepticon side there are uh, these fire cons that are there's three of them uh, flame flame feather Cindersaur and Spark Stalker. So those are the three Decepticons. And then we've got some Autobots that are back on Cybertron as prisoners of the Fire Cons. They are Dogfight, Fizzle, Guzzle, and Sizzle, Backstreet, and Override. So how the premise of this book is, is there's an organization on Earth that calls itself uh, Z Foundation, and it's secretly run by those evil headmaster Decepticons. Remember uh, Lord... What was his name? Zark? I think it was Lord Zark. Yeah, Lord Zark with Scorpinox. And they got Horror Bill, Fangry, and Squeeze Play. So, secretly, they're, they act like they're just normal humans in a business, and they're hiring these bounty hunters to go out and destroy um, to any of the Transformers. They don't care, Decepticons or Autobots. And secretly, what they're doing is they have prisoners on Cybertron. Autobot prisoners and they send them across the space bridge and then they have these guys go out and they give them these uh, Jammers that'll prevent the Transformers from transforming and then they can capture or destroy them and they'll give them fifty thousand dollars a piece for them So the one guy what is his name? I think it's uh, Randy. He's the smart one in the group Oh Felix 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 is the smart one in the group. He's like the uh, mechanical electronical genius he figures out how to take those jammers and duplicate them because they only gave them so many for the ones that they had sent across the bridge so they'd sent i think three autobots across the bridge yeah sizzle fizzle and backstreet so it was just the three of them so they gave them three jammers but felix figured out how to duplicate them and then as they're going through and attacking the autobots the autobots tell them that they're act they're being uh, played they're being duped. So Felix kind of thinks about it and he goes, hey, maybe we are being duped. So they pretend to have destroyed those Autobots, go back to collect their money, and of course they're going to get double-crossed by uh, Lord Zarek and the Decepticons. And the battle takes over and they bring in those Autobots that they had pretended to destroy but actually are now sided with them and they came in and covered their butts and they used the jammers to uh, stop the Decepticons. So pretty cool little issue. So that's number 46. So number 47. This one is in Key Collector app. Uh, the story is called Club Con and it's the uh, first appearance of Rain Dance, first appearance of Glan Gran Grand Slarm, no Grand Slam. First team appearance of the Seacons, Nautilator, Overbite, Sea Wing, Scalor, Snap Trap, and Tentacle. And it's Bob Badansky and Jose Delbo. 
So Decepticons set up a fake resort on their island so that they can um, be in the international waters or whatever waters they are without having any government to attract too much attention. So they set up a fake resort and have people flying in and having the time of their lives. And they advertise it on television and Starscream is acting like a servant, like he's, he's serving all these freaking humans. And what it ultimately is for is um, way back uh, several centuries before, uh, there was an Autobot ship that was flying and they crashed on Earth. And they were two Autobots that were cassette tapes. And they ended up somehow in an 18th century pirate ship, pirate treasure. So they're in a, a sunken galleon. So the Decepticons have their island out there so that they can search for these cassettes and find out the information that these Autobots have on. So, um, what would we have there? I think it was uh, one of the girlfriends. Um, and, you know, they're going to go rescue uh, Buster from the island. So it was his girlfriend, Jesse. So she sneaks onto the island with Blaster to thwart their plans and losing... Um, they end up losing the Autobot cassettes. Uh, although Blaster did copy the tapes, so he knows what's on the tapes. And they were going to... Um, rescue Buster, which that also failed, but they know it's on the tapes. So that's pretty cool. And that's the end of that episode because they leave you kind of hanging in that issue. So we're on to 48, the return of Megatron. So this one's called the flames of Boltax. Bob Medansky's writer and Jose Delbo is the art. So Ratbat, Soundwave, Starscream, check out the Autobot tape using a, a VR uh, setup they call Real Vision. And they tested it out on Buster first and freaked him out. And they were having like pterodactyls and shit attack him. And he was, he was freaking out how real it was. And Buster managed to break out of his little prison, sneak out, and then watch what the uh, Autobot cassettes had because they wanted to experience it in VR, I guess. So they showed that Optimus Prime millions of years ago back on Cybertron made a trip to um, a mountain called Boltax. Um, where it's a mainframe complex with all the stored data of Cybertron and data a database called the Underbase. And the Decepticons with Megatron uh, tried to get in there and they ended up destroying everything. And this uh, Underbase programmer, the, all the knowledge was fired out into space in the battle. And Optimus feels terrible that he went there in the first place because he brought Megatron because Megatron wanted to thwart whatever Optimus was doing. Optimus was just looking for enlightenment. And they ended up screwing the whole thing up, so they found that the Underbase is flying through space, and these two Autobot cassettes, they have basically the trajectory. They know where it's going to be. So, of course, it's going to show up at Earth, right? And very soon, because, you know, that's how the plot works. So now they're going to uh, figure out how they can get that information and use it for you know, whatever, more power. It's always what it is, always for more power. So this one here is issue number 49. It's a continuation. So it's called Cold War. So Bob Medansky again, uh, Joe, Jose uh, Delbo is the art. So Starscream calls the Headmasters and they land their ship at the Decepticon base on, the, uh, on an ice floe in the Arctic. And Starscream uh, sets up uh, two groups of Decepticons to basically fight each other because he found out about that Z Foundation thing. So he wants to set up everybody to fight each other while he goes into space and takes the under base. The under, what did I just call it? I was just talking about it two seconds ago. That program. What's it called? Yeah, the under base. The under base is the name of this program or thing that flew out into space with all the knowledge. So they are all battling each other and then he um they captured blaster and he leaves them on an ice flow with a transmitter to call the autobots and then he doubles back and steals the headmaster's ship to get to the underbase out in space so that is freaking hilarious so he's double crossing everybody and then of course when they figure it all out in this issue double size giant 50th issue, uh, issue Starscream is going to triumph. He's going to get the underbase. So it's called Dark Star. So Bob Badansky and Jose Delbo. So this whole issue is about 
them battling in, in space. The Decepticons and Autobots try to kind of work together, but they're still fighting and they go and they try to stop Starscream and uh, he gets the underbase and turns into this giant huge thing and uh, he loses control and basically blows himself up because he can't handle the power. And then they realize that no one being could handle all that power. So everybody loses in this one. So, and that's the, we're up to 50 now. Wow, 50. So I got, yeah, five more. And there's a Jim Lee cover in there too. I think it's 55 is 54. One of those is Jim Lee cover. So there we go. That's the next five of the Transformers. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.